and welcome to this week's angling vlog. This week you join me on a cold and damp morning on the banks of the River Ribble. This morning is one of those mornings on the river that I love. There's not a breath of wind, it's misty, overcast. The river's carrying a bit of extra water and looks good for the bite or two. So the river behind me has actually got a bit of extra water in today. What that means is we're going to be targeting that inside line and hoping to draw fish in. Hopefully with the extra water, those fish will already be thinking about moving into the slacker side of the river and hopefully we can get a few bites. So with that said, I'm super excited to wet a line. Let's take a look at the swim and the side tray. So as you can see, we've gone super old school today and it doesn't come more old school than a shaky box and a Dinsmore net bag. So looking at the swim, as you can see, my net and the bits and pieces, you can see that the river here is quite fast down the middle. And those who watch the blog quite a bit will know that I split the river into lanes. We won't be going out there today, I don't think. You just see down this inside line here how much slower the river is it's still fast don't get me wrong but it's not as fast as out there so today i'm going to be targeting these fish just down this inside line hoping that there's you know no snags it looks nice and even and by that i mean if you zoom in you can't really see any breaks in the flow that would suggest there's a snag it was a nice even trot and that's the swim a lovely day to be on the bank misty overcast and an empty bank absolutely beautiful so when i travel to the bigger rivers i do always carry two rods with me i always carry my 17 foot preston innovations rod and my 14 foot corum glide what that allows me to do is to pick the right rod for the situations that we're facing on the river behind me, if we were going down the middle, I would certainly have picked the 17 foot rod today. But I've gone with my 14 foot glide because I feel like a 17 foot rod would hinder me today. We might have to go down that super inside line and the shorter rod is going to allow me to target that inside line without the rod being too long that you won't be able to use it. Start off with, I'm going to go with my Corum glide rod in 14 foot. I've got my Shimano Tekium reel with three pound, three ounce float fish. I've got that, because we're going down the inside line, I've gone with a 10 number four dome top float. That's just gonna allow me to pull this bulk shot along the bottom, enough weight to hold back. And the good thing about these dome tops is that rubber will go over a 14 number four or a 12 number four if we wanna up the size of float. We don't need to put new rubbers on the line. I've got that down to a bulk shot of Dinsmore number four shots and a hook link two pound one ounce line to a size 16 hook. That's the setup, let's make a start. The first thing I did when I arrived on the peg was mix up some of the hinders supercharged ground bait. I left it to settle while I set it up and then passed it through a riddle and as you can see what we've got now is a much finer animal and I'm hoping that extra smell is going to draw them fish in. On the first cast of the day, just putting some bait in, you'll notice that the ground bait is still on the floor next to me and the reason for that is obviously I want to make sure I've got a line that I can go down before I put my bait in. It does seem like it shallows up there a little bit because the floats come up in the water. But you can see there we're going down the swim nicely, it's not too fast. The, I don't think the fish will be there. I'm just going to start down this inside line today and just see if we can draw any fish in. We've got a nice marker for the hemp with that tree. And it's going down nicely. And what we're hoping is that any fish I've started to move onto this side because it's just that bit slacker and there's a fish it's coming right down the swim so that's a good sign that the first trot down we've had a bite we have got 
a swim that is shallowing up slightly but the fact that we've got a bite on the first cast is great news it's a dace and it's not a bad one so a bite on the first trot down always a confidence boost it has come down this inside line here we'll just drop him in the net has come down this inside line here where it does look nice and even if you just look at this bit of the swim there it just looks nice and even glide i do think we've got something round about here but we can just go on the outside of that we'll have a couple more trots down try and work out the swim now i know we can get from a to b quite easily I'm just going to put a bit of hemp in in line with that tree what I'm hoping is that's about where my float will be settling. The pace of the river today is going to push the, the feed down. Nice bit of hemp in the river. I'm going to feed positive today. Obviously, I want to attract fish into the area that are in the hole of the river. And to do that, you've got to put food in. On days like this, it just takes time to draw them fish in and get them on the line. And once you sort the line out, you can generally get a few bites. But in these early stages, it's just about getting a few bites and trying to get an area where you're getting consistent bites. And the nip in the air on a dace in the palm it does feel good to be on the banks of the river with the conditions cooling a flat calm and running a float through the swim great stuff and it's mad just how moving a line out by a rod length can change the results you know going down this inside line we had one or two days but just moving it out just that little bit the better quality and more consistent and that is a lovely day and with that sun just creeping over them houses that is autumn into winter in a picture when we wake Birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have. Let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us crazy, but things are finally right. The future is bright oh, You and I, we got it oh, We don't need no more oh, Even in the hard times You and I can weather any storm And the quality of the day so far has been really good they've all been of a good average stamp and beautiful so because this river does fall that quick what it means is conditions can change during your session by that i mean the river can drop a foot while you're fishing and they're little things that you've just got to be careful of what started off as maybe a a four foot swim can soon change into a you know a two foot or it can go the other way it can go up by a foot so you have always got to be careful and have your eye 
on what the river's doing. And it's another nice day. Another beautiful river ribble days. Really do love being on the banks of the river ribble. It's a wild river, being spate, it rises quick and falls quick. And what that allows you to do is have more windows of opportunity to get on. On screen now you can see a picture of the graph from the River Dee. And now you can see a graph of the River Ribble. And you can see over the same amount of time how the Dee really hasn't lost that much water. Whereas the River Ribble has been up and down and back up again in that space of time. So what it allows you to do is to get on the river a lot quicker than you can the others. So every time the bites have died off a bit, just been going over the top with two really big balls of the ground bait laced with that hemp. Fish has just come over them balls of ground bait that we've just fed. And when you're fishing sessions like this, it's all about just trying them little things that can get them fish back in the swim and one tactic that you can do is to really feed heavy with baits like ground bait and hemp and really try and concentrate them fish back on the line and I think Mr Duck agrees but that fish is ice cold but just coming after feeding that ball of ground bait And just shows there how important it is just to inch that bait through just holding that float right back and again coming after feeding that ground bait but just edging the bait through and i am amazed today this every single day snarly has come along this line i'm amazed that mr pike hasn't jumped out but great fun and as days go that is where it's at absolutely fin perfect plump river ribble days and that is another beautiful days and boy have i missed the stick float fishing for the days absolutely beautiful and it was all going so well most of the day on the same hook link but eventually missed the tangle and the first different species of the day a little chublet i can't believe it's taken him so long So we're coming towards the end of the session now and it has been an enjoyable day on the bank. Probably got about half an hour of the day left. So we'll call this one the last one for the vlog and what I'll do is I'll catch us all at the very end and we'll have a look at that final net and see how we've done. I've had plenty of these quality days today and it has been a really enjoyable session on the bank and how can you not be happy with days like that so towards the end of the session really did ball that ground bait in i managed to pick up a few more of those quality days you now join me at the end of the session and what an enjoyable one it was plenty of bites and plenty of quality as you can see in that final net an enjoyable day by the side of the river 
in perfect trotting conditions. I hope you've enjoyed this week's blog. Tight lines in your own fishing. And I'll catch you all next week. Tight lines.